زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك نكاح مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك مبارك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to the series where we discuss the very important topic of marriage and divorce. I'm here with Sheikh Haytham al Haddad. Sheikh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have been discussing the qualities of a potential wife. I'd like to continue from the last episode where you discussed the hadith about increasing the number of the ummah. Is the reason yeah. for marriage. We said that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, I want to marry this lady, but she doesn't bear children. So the Prophet وسلم, said, No. Mm. So the man left. Then the man came again and said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to marry this lady. The Prophet وسلم, said, No. So the man left. The third time, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to marry this lady. The Prophet وسلم, at that time, he said, No. Marry al wadud al wadud. We explained the word al wadud in the previous episode. I hope that the audience remember that. And al wadud, al wadud, the one who bears children. Not in fact, bear children. No, no. Birds produce a lot of children. Okay. Wadud continuously uh-huh. Uh-huh. does that. Why is this? This is what the Prophet said. I will be proud of your number in front of other prophets on the day of resurrection. If you remember, we discussed the aims of marriage. And we said one of the aims of marriage is what? To increase the number. To increase the number of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the prophets and their followers on the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that one prophet will come with one follower, with two followers, with a few number of people. And Musa alayhi salam will come with a large number of followers. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I wish to be the one with the biggest number of followers. Allah jalla wa'ala likes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the most. Allah jalla wa'ala revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the best of speech. Al-Quran, the best of books is Al-Quran, although all of it is Kalamullah. At-Tawrah, the Torah is Kalamullah, the mm. Injil is Kalamullah, mm. the Zabur is Kalamullah, and the Quran is the best of Kalamullah. So, this Ummah is blessed by having the best of prophets, having the best of what? Of books. Speech. That's why if this Ummah is big in number, this will please Allah, and this will please Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And that's why we said that one of the main aims of marriage is to try to bring more children. Mm. So I suppose this now brings the topic about what if someone can't have children? Where does that go in terms of priorities? Uh, we will discuss that, but I want to emphasize on one point here. See, Muslims in the West, they sometimes talk about equality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And now people are talking about quality, but not quantity. See, we want equality and quantity. Mm -hmm. Now, some brothers put a conflict between equality and quantity in terms of children. And it has been established through some historical events that the quality of children will not be sacrificed if you have more children. In fact, more children will help you to have a quality tarbiyah, quality upbringing. In fact, the children will support each other. So this idea of these days, if I have less children, I'll be able to give more time to them individually. This is not entirely correct. Well, to be honest with you, some people might say, no, no, this is not true. I totally disagree with this. Mm. I totally disagree with this. 
my dear brothers and sisters, there are a number of factors that we need to put in mind when we live. Yeah? There is something called baraka. Mm -hmm. Baraka. Important concept. Yes. This is a very fundamental concept in our life as Muslims. And sometimes we forget it. For example, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَ صح? مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَ That صدقة will not decrease your wealth. Now, in reality, صدقة, charity, when you give money as a صدقة, as a charity, it will decrease your amount of money. If you think about it logically, that's the case. You have 100 pounds, yeah, in your pocket. You gave a صدقة, 20 pounds. What is left? 80. 80. You've decreased your wealth. It has been decreased. No one can argue with this. But in reality, the impact of this 80 is more than the impact of 100 because of the barakah. Some scholars now and some speakers, they say maybe the 20 pounds would have protected you from something that may cause a loss for the 100 pounds. It is true. Exactly. You might have a car crash. <laughs> you might have a, a fine, <laughs> a ticket. Yeah, something like this. But because of the 20 pounds that you have given, Allah protected you from other factors or other elements that might have decreased your wealth. This is one thing. But also the element of barakah. Mm. Yeah, it is an intangible concept. Mm -hmm. See, time, time. Now, many people say, if I read more Quran, I will lose time. They don't realize that reading more Quran will give you barakah in your time. Exactly. So sometimes this is strange with time. Sometimes you do something and it might take you two hours and you feel like I haven't achieved anything. And sometimes you do something and it takes two hours and you think I've achieved so much. Yes. And there's the same amount of yes. time. Yes. And see that barakah in time, Allah, <laughs> it is a very strange thing. Sometimes you might lose your watch. And if there is no barakah in your time, you might spend half an hour looking for it. Yeah? Or what happens is that your laptop, which you are heavily dependent on it, might have a virus or a small problem. You might spend a day or two solving that minor problem. If you have barakah in your time, you might find a solution whereby this problem has been solved. Mm -hmm. Agree or not? Yeah, agree. Easily. Exactly. This is baraka, baraka. So when you have more children, the more baraka you will have. Be confident because this is what Allah wants. And this will affect the rest of your life as well. And this will affect the rest of your life. And again, don't be worried about financial difficulties or finance. Although to be honest, I think if you're worried about financial difficulties all the time, we won't do anything. Exactly. Wallahi, I remember that a friend of mine, hmm, his father, from one wife, not from many, he had 12 sons and four daughters. Mashallah. Total of 16 from one wife. <laughs> yeah? And all of them, or as far as I know, most of the sons, they were well-educated, engineers, have good jobs, and they started to even support their father. How? How is this? The element of barakah. Yeah. And though most of them, I know a few of them, yeah, I know this brother and some of his brothers, well-mannered, well-educated, as we said. So quality has not been sacrificed, exactly. Because of what? Because the of the quantity. Yeah, so we should not be worried about this. And if the person intends this, then Allah Jalla wa ala will give him support. And as we said, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, I don't like to have sexual relationship with women, but I force myself to have this relationship in order to produce children so who please. will worship Allah. Subhanallah. Amazing points. Now, let me just read two hadith, yeah, two prophetic statements. They will summarize part of what we have discussed. One hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, The best of your women are those who are bearers of many children, the quality of 
walud loving to their husbands comforting and tolerant and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said provided that they have taqwa of allah jalla wa ala in the other hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said your women who will be of the people of jannah are those who are loving to their husbands bearers of many children and concerned about their husbands mm. very beautiful hadith that summarizes some of the qualities that we have mentioned Excellent. another important quality that has been discussed maybe not enough which is to be virgin mm. the wife to be virgin the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbi wa sallam said tazawwaju al abka marry the virgin women why because they have a sweet tongue as we said and they have the ability to produce more children and they will be content with what with little also in hadith jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu you know jabir went in an expedition with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was looking after the army at one point the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked next to jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the companions he said jabir have you got married he said yes he said whom did you marry a virgin or previously married he said ya rasulullah a lady that was previously married she was divorced or widow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fa halla bikran tulaibuha wa tulaibuk wouldn't it be better for you to marry a virgin yeah that you play together in one narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wa tudahikuha wa tudahikuk yeah means you play with her she plays with you you laugh together jazakallah khair sheikh barakallah uh, fik we've now come to the break we'll be back soon inshallah please join us again we will continue talking about the important qualities of a potential wife assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to this important discussion where we shall continue from where we left off, talking about the very important qualities that we might want to look for in a potential wife. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's get back into it. The qualities of wives. What's the next quality that you want to mention? Okay. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Let me just read. two hadith yeah two prophetic statements they will summarize part of what we have discussed one hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sahbi wa sallam said the best of your women are those who are bearers of many children the quality of walud loving to their husbands comforting and tolerant and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said provided that they have taqwa of allah jalla wa ala in the other hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said your women who will be of the people of jannah are those who are loving to their husbands bearers of many children and concerned about their husbands mm. very beautiful hadith that summarize some of the qualities that we have mentioned another important quality that has been discussed maybe not enough which is to be virgin mm. the wife to be virgin the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbi wa sallam said tazawwaju al abka marry the virgin women why because they have a sweet tongue as we said and they have the ability to produce more children and they will be content with what with little also in hadith jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu you know Jabir went in an expedition with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was looking after the army at one point the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked next to Jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the companions he said Jabir have you got married he said yes he said whom did you marry a virgin or previously married he said ya rasulullah a lady that was previously married she was divorced or widow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fa halla bikran tulaibuha وتلاعبك wouldn't it be better for you to marry a virgin yeah that you play together in one narration the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wa tudahikuha wa tudahikuk yeah means 
you play with her, she plays with you, you laugh together. Now, what does that mean? Because I'm sure that the sisters who were previously married, they will say, well, this is unfair exactly. to us. Okay. See, in general, the non-married people or the brothers who have not been exposed to marriage, who have not been married before, is far better for them to marry sisters who have not been married before. Mm. The compatibility, we'll discuss the issue of the compatibility, isn't it? Yes. The compatibility will be likely to be achieved. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense. It does make sense. The Prophet ﷺ explained this because the woman who have not been exposed to marriage before or have experience before, she will be content with any little amount of romance, sexual intimacy. She will see her husband as everything in her life because she does not have previous experience. So nothing to compare it to? Exactly, nothing to compare to or no man to compare to. Mm. While the sister with a previous experience or previous experiences, it is unlikely, definitely, to be like this. Mm. Same thing with the man. Of course. But with the sister, the case is more. Yeah? And sometimes I see it in the Islamic Sharia Council. I see that it is unfair for a young brother who has not been married to marry a sister who has experience. She's demanding a lot. She has more experience. She's used to certain standards, maybe. Yes, she's used to certain standards. As you said, she compares him with other men. Mm. Why did we say in particular with sisters, this quality is needed in sisters? Because, see, and I hope our sisters listen to this carefully. The sister might be hurt when her husband compares her to another woman. Mm -hmm. She might be hurt a lot. But the husband will be hurt maybe 100 times more if he were to be compared with another man. Mother, yeah. This is part of, part of uh, the this personality is, of the yeah, man. Yeah. Okay? See, look at this. The man might feel jealous when another man looks at his wife. Mm. But he will be maybe double jealous or 100 times jealous, in fact, when his wife looks at another man. Yeah. Yeah? The man wants to see that his wife does not see any other man other than him. Mm. So I would like to bring this issue to the attention of our sisters. Because we are going to talk about elements that helps yeah, a healthy marriage. Successful marriage. A successful marriage. Yeah? One of them is this. Mm. And as one of the non-Muslim authors said to women, she gave an advice to women. Let your husband feel that he is the lion of the den. Part of this is that don't tell him about other men. Mm. Don't tell him about the generosity of other men, of that particular man, yeah? Or in particular, things related to sexual intimacy. So this apply, for example, if the sisters are talking together about their husbands, and someone says, oh, my husband is this, this, and this, the wife might think, my husband doesn't do that. Yes, wallahi, you mentioned this. Brother Daniel, which is really very important issue, mm. okay? Sisters have to be careful of this. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu didn't like qila wa qal, mm. yeah? It has been said this, this, this. The speech has to be useful. So sisters, and when you sit together, don't praise your husbands, everyone, is proud of her husband and mentions the good qualities of her husband because the other married sister, she might not have a husband with these qualities, especially things related to the bed. Mm. Yeah? And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah, when he gave a mawidah admonition to women, a lady came 
and he stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, by Allah, women talk about these issues. And then the Prophet Sallallahu was angry. And he said, this is like an example, when they talk about these private issues, this is like the example of a shaitan and a shaitana, a female devil and a male devil. They met in the street. They had sexual relationship in the street while people are watching. Look a very harsh and disgusting example. Yes, very disgusting example. The Prophet ﷺ wants to show how disgusting this issue is. Mm. Isn't yeah. pushing me a private matter? It is a private matter, let alone that it creates jealousy. Same thing talking about the generosity of the husband. Mm. Same thing is the discussion about the romantic nature of the husbands. Yeah? And that's why, you know, these plays became common these days that describe the husbands as a very romantic, generous, caring, kind man. Mm -hmm. yeah. They caused a lot of harm. Yeah. And I remember hearing cases of divorce because some women compared their husbands to the hero in the film or in the play. There were a number of cases genuine number of cases we heard about them yeah so if that sister for example knew about this issue we we're talking about and realized that it might affect her husband if she refrained from comparing then that divorce might not have happened yeah without a shadow of a doubt we'll have to stop there your brothers and sisters please come back and do join us for the next episode when we will continue this important topic of talking about the important qualities when looking for a potential wife السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نكاح مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك There is joy, there is happiness In this union let there always be bliss Allah will bless your home with light Your heart with never ending delight Two worlds today have now become one The road ahead is as bright as the sun Oh Allah Keep this marriage so strong In your hands does the future belong Belong